Cancer 16, holding a manuscript. Now, that's what Jones put to interpret Elsie's image. And uh, Dane Rudyard went a bit further into this. He, he, he added some of his own imagination to these interpretations. Um, he, he put um, studying a mandala with the help of a very ancient book. And the, um, the key word that Jones chose was profundity. And, and so Rudyard's interpretation goes further in that direction. We have the image of somebody who is looking at ancient wisdom, occult wisdom, symbolic wisdom, the mandala, and looking at a, an ancient book, somebody else's interpretation. What did that image mean, I wonder? What did other people think who, whose opinions were written down and, and made precious and kept alive past the test of time? And that's so close to what we're doing ourselves, isn't it? We're, we're, we're taking images that were revealed to a clairvoyant woman, Elsie Wheeler, a hundred years ago. A um, bit like a mandala in, insofar as it's non-verbal. It's just an image. And then um, the ancient writings may be uh, the, the text of Mark Edmund Jones, and he wrote this, and, and then Rudyard wrote that, and other commentators have written something else, and we've even had images put forward by Ruby Fumiski in Japan and some others. Um, each of us is actually trying to, to get what's happening here. And Elsie was, was, was also receiving. We were, we're, we're looking through the eyes of these commentators, Jones Rudyard in particular, to see what Elsie was seeing. But Elsie was receiving the message from another source, which we're saying were the Sabian people. And uh, this, uh, this group of people, they go back a long, long time, 12,000 years, it is suggested. The, um, the interpretations that we, we give to symbols come from a projection of our imagination. And our imagination is partly, if not largely, built on our understandings of things, which have come from our past experiences and teachings and, and readings and so on, and been assimilated within our own perceptual capacity. And, um, what Rudyard is pointing out is that we can see that in, in different ways. Um, the mandala, for example, um, indicates an Eastern approach to knowledge. We don't really pass knowledge much in the West through the medium of the equivalent of mandala. Perhaps the closest might be the tarot deck. Certain glyphs and sigils in magic has, has, has got the same idea, but nothing like a mandala. And let's take a very simple example of where we do use something like a mandala in, in the Christian sense of the, the Christian cross. Now, the Christian cross is um, a variation on a very, very old symbol. The, the solar cross is a cross where the, the, the midpoint of each line intersects. Christian cross is, is not like that. It's a different sort of position of the crossbar. So we've changed an ancient image in Christianity to make it something else. And it actually stands for something else, doesn't it? Whereas in the olden days, that cross stood for um, <clears throat> materiality being brought to earth and, and, and balanced the four elements, perhaps. Who knows exactly what interpretation was given in the past. But today's symbol of the cross is more associated with the, um, the crucifixion and therefore leads us to contemplate suffering and self-sacrifice and penalty, which we're in danger of going into a negative interpretation with that. Um, Rudyard is saying that that is also true of the solar cross, which indicates exclusion. We're, 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 we're saying no with that cross. That's what we use to guard against intrusive psychic forces sometimes. We, we guard against it, so we're saying no. But the, the other way of experiencing foreness is, is, is 
a square. And, and that indicates inclusivity. And his suggestion is that the West tends towards separation, separateness, exclusiveness, whereas the East looks differently. The East, uh, in their philosophy, they look to try and embrace opposites into an integrated whole. So rather than saying this or that in the West, in the East they say, well, this and that. And, and they try and look at the higher posture where you can see that two opposites are in fact harmoniously integrated into a greater whole when you ch change your perception. So, this degree, Cancer 16, uh, we're, we're talking about profound self-understanding. We need to study ourselves and to equate the idea met metaphorically in this degree of a mandala to the picture of the life circumstances that we have. We wake up each day and we see an image of our life and, and we don't think about it because it's pretty much the same as yesterday's. But if for a moment we stop and we just look around us and we see what there is to see, just think about that. Do you see grey or do you see green more frequently? Some of us live in cities and see grey and some of us live in the country and see green. Is that significant or is it not? I would say it is. Um, do we hear birdsong every morning or do we hear traffic? Does this affect our psyche? Well, yes, of course it does. So, the mandala of our lives is there for us to look at, if only we would look. How do we gain insight, intuitive insight, into the meaning of what we see? And the answer is suggested as the, the very ancient book, the manuscript. We don't have manuscripts nowadays. We don't even have books nowadays. We're going back in time, ancient wisdom. Well, it wasn't necessarily right when it was first written uh, 10,000 years ago. But if it's lasted 10,000 years, then there's a good chance that a lot of people thought so. There aren't any books going back that old, but there are some that um, are written in, in a different shape um, than the written form. Um, there's a temple in uh, Gobekli Tepe in Turkey that goes back that, that far, and Stonehenge goes back uh, 5,000 years, and um, texts come from the ancient time written on manuscripts. So whatever actually is kept alive for all of those years has had the stamp of approval by many people for a long time. doesn't necessarily make it right. It's not really a defense that astrology is old, therefore it's true. That's a poor argument. But nevertheless, it's food for thought, isn't it? If some teaching like the I Ching or tarot cards or other forms of metaphor happen to keep be kept alive for hundreds of years, well, I wonder why. And, and that's because people want it to stay alive. They keep on passing it on. And that's what we're trying to do with the Sabian symbols, isn't it? We're trying to record our opinions and uh, commentaries and, and points of view to, to create a body of teaching that's passed into the future. And um, if we try to then, having interpreted these ancient teachings, give meaning to them, on the level of personal experience, then we're using them properly. It is, it is not enough simply to, to read the manuscript, to understand the concepts, to agree or disagree with the philosophy, and then that's it, discuss it with somebody else. That, that, that really doesn't take you very far. That gives you a certain powerful, clear mind and, and, and the ego that goes along with that. Not enough. And certainly the Sabian symbols cannot be interpreted on the level of left brain mind, logical thinking only. It's just not enough. We have then to understand what that means as an embodied experience. 
So if, if Cancer 16 is important in, in your set of Sabian symbols, what does it mean in your life? Well, it suggests to me a serious student of ancient wisdom. And that's fairly clear. Does that change who you are? Does that change your personality? Well, it could, couldn't it? The, the type of people that tend to be studious, scholastic, and serious about ancient wisdom, they tend to become slow of speech, introverted, considered in their opinions, consulted for their wisdom. There's a type of person that goes along with this image, isn't there? And I think we need to look at becoming that that type of person, where you you take an elder's point of view, you consider both points of view, and you try and see yourself from somebody else's point of view as well, just to, to check out that you're not lost in bias, that you're not overly subjective in your interpretations. So, to do this requires a lot of self-contemplation. This is a very serious degree, more suitable for an older person, probably, so you, you grow into it as, as the years pass. Mm -hmm.